Greetings everyone, my name is Julia and welcome to Home Flow Yoga. Today I'm so excited to talk about this topic because I really just feel like it's so important for women and also people who aren't women to really understand the menstrual cycle and also how it pertains to yoga and how we can use the practice of yoga to support ourselves on our menstrual cycle. Stay tuned for all three um, things that I'm talking about because I think they're equally important and I think they'll be helpful for you. It wasn't until like the last few years that I really began to understand or give a little bit more thought into the other phases in the cycle that are not the, the time of the month where I'm bleeding, where I, I'm on my period. So if you didn't know, we have four phases of our menstrual cycle. We have our menstrual cycle where, you know, that's the one that's the most common where we're actually bleeding. We have our follicular phase, we have ovulation phase, and then we have the luteal phase. And then it starts all the way back over every single month. And I'm not gonna get too deep into what each phase means. I, maybe I'll do that in another video, but I do think it is important to understand what happens during each of those phases so that, you know, we don't think anything is wrong with us or we don't think we're like moody or like, you know, we're off or anything like that. No, your body is literally releasing chemicals at different points in your cycle and like that's just how we are we're cyclical beings um and i think that's why it's super helpful to have the uh woman or the feminine energy compared to the moon because the moon is unlike the sun if you look every night in the sky the moon is in a different phase and that's how we are as women like we're just we're multifaceted so it's really important to understand these different uh phases in our cycles just so we understand that we are divine nothing is wrong with us um every day is not going to look the same for you as a woman and that's okay so that leads me into i guess my first point or maybe that was my first point but um understanding the different phases of the cycle can really help when it comes to a movement practice because um, I'm a former athlete and I know that we used to train really, really hard and there would be days where I could like lift a lot of weights and there would be days where I just feel super sluggish. And I used to honestly think it was because I was lazy or I wasn't working hard or just like I had a bad day. But the reality is like different times of the month, different times of the cycle, you're going to feel, you know, more energized um, at different points than you would at other times. And that's completely OK. And I think, especially if you're not training, like you don't have any like sports to train for, it's really good to center your movement practice around your cycle. For example, when it's time for menstruation, when it's that time of the month, don't sweat it if you can't deadlift. Like don't try to deadlift. Don't try to lift heavy weights, um, even in your yoga practice. Like this is a time where it's good to chill out, take a yin yoga class, don't do postures that are like super strenuous because that's not really serving you. That is the time of the month where energetically, you know, you are meant to go within. You're meant to go slower. You're meant to take your time. So honor each phase of your cycle and center your movement practices around what each of those phases require. I think I'll make an, uh, another video and just kind of, I guess, give some ideas on what that would actually look like like in real life you know every day isn't going to look the same a lot of yoga teachers say that you know your body changes every single day and that's extremely true for women our bodies change every single day you know we're our cycle is one that is i guess kind of getting us ready for um you know to have a child and even if you're not either thinking about having children or you maybe don't want children or anything like that, like you can still follow and understand the menstrual cycle to know when you are more fertile for your ideas. Like, you know, for me during ovulation, I have so many ideas. Like I have so many creative ideas. And what I started doing is like writing down all my ideas in ovulation. And I feel like I'm like, since I started doing that, like I don't have burnout anymore when it comes to creative ideas because I use that time during ovulation to collect all of these ideas and I just collect it in my journal. And when I'm feeling uninspired, I just go back to when I was inspired during my ovulation or during my time during ovulation. And I'm like, oh wait, that was a great idea. I can do that. So I kind of got off topic with that. But I think where I was going with it is that when you pay attention or you kind of start to understand your 
where you are in your cycle, you know how to, it's like a life hack for knowing like what to do at different times of the month, you know? Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is um, the flow of energy. And that's something that we really focus on in yoga. It's like making sure our energy channels are unblocked so that this energy, this prana, this life force can flow through us. And it's very important for women as people who tend to give, as people who are nurturers, we gotta keep the energy flowing within our bodies because if we don't, we're gonna feel depleted. And what I love about yoga is it truly is a science because um, you know when you study it, you start to understand what is good to do to get the energy flowing and like what could obstruct energy and one of the things like during your menstrual cycle is it's 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 um it's said to as our bodies are cleansing as our as our um our menstrual cycle flows down so it's good to not do any inversions during this time of the month and if you don't know what inversions are they're like headstands and you don't want to do any inversions I'll just include a picture. You don't want to do any inversions or anything like that that's going to make the flow of energy like reverse, if that makes sense. Because naturally, our energy, we're, we're releasing. So we don't want to like reverse that energy or like obstruct that process because it would be, it, it, will, it will throw everything off. And that's not what we're trying to do in yoga. We're trying to make everything flow. We're trying to make everything, you know, uh, balanced within our mind, body, soul, etc. So um, it's very important to honor this time during the month of either by either just taking a break during that time of the month from practicing yoga and or doing slower practices and or making sure that we avoid our avoid inversion so that we don't um, bring ourselves out of balance with uh, our flow. I just feel like yoga is such a powerful practice because it really can help us to balance the hormones. And um, I think that's like a big a big topic right now in the wellness industry is like hormonal balance. And your hormones can get thrown off from any number of things. It can be light, it could be, it could be too much light from your cell phone or like light in your house when you're trying to sleep or light from the TV or blue lights from the phones or your laptops. It can be perfumes. It can be, there's so many things that can throw your hormones off. And yoga is so good because it helps us to balance our hormones in our body. By balance these hormones in the body by like massaging these glands and like getting blood flow through it. So yoga is such a powerful practice because for women it can help us to work with these glands in our, in our body that sometimes are under or overactive. So I, that is my third thing that I really wanna say is that this this practice of yoga is not necessarily just for fitness or being flexible. It's also for balancing your hormones, you know? Um, I would say that the majority of us could benefit from balancing our hormones. And I can always feel the difference when I practice yoga afterwards. I just feel super stable in the mind, super stable in the body, super stable in, super stable in spirit. Um, and so that is just yet another reason why this practice is so powerful for women. And I think that if you are a woman, if you identify as a woman, I highly recommend the practice of yoga. Um, you can choose many different styles, whatever style feels best for you. I'm one of those people that believe yoga in general is beneficial. So that's all I have to say about yoga and the menstrual cycle. If you have any questions or you wanna continue this conversation, I think this is something I'm gonna dive even deeper into as the weeks and the years go by. Um, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if you feel that yoga helps you as a woman. Let me know if you feel like you've experienced the difference of practicing and how that um, impact on your hormones and your moods and all those things. Um, let me know if it makes a difference for you. So that's all I have to say today. If you've made it in to the end of this video, please subscribe and join this conversation. And yeah, I hope you have a peaceful rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video. And I will talk to you soon. Peace and light.